is a a sci-fi coming of age drama set in a monster apocalypse when you were both reading the script what what was it about this idea that really like stood out to you and made you want to get involved um i think there's a lot of there's a lot of cool elements here i mean starting with of course the great the great nicholas cage um and then i think um beyond the sci-fi there's there's a great family drama um about the male ego um we also um i i i always fall in love with directors too and ben's a ben's a smart dude and um we immediately hit off talking movies and and whatnot and Frank, um, Frank Lobelia, our, our DP, is also fantastic. The way we shot it was so unique, too. The way they, um, it was very spontaneous. Like, for example, in a movie when usually it's like coverage on Max, coverage on you, and and it's cut back and forth, and it's my time to act, and then it's your time to act with Frank and Ben, and the way they operate, it's it's on you, and then it's here, and then it's on my hand, and then it's and then it's always you never know, and so you're always in the moment, and uh, all these all these elements build up and, and and made it such a such an interesting experience. And yourself, Max? Yeah, um, a lot of the you know same reasons for that Jane said, but but additionally, um, like you said, this is a uh, a coming of age film under layers of gore and blood and scaries and um cockroaches uh so yeah i i really did appreciate that i think that's um what draws me to a lot of the stuff that i do is um finding these characters in moments where they really do have to make a change or want to make a change um you know when when the action relies on the characters wants and needs. Um, that's what I really love. Um, I also think that, um, yeah, yeah, like you said, um, the camera work and the way that we were going to shoot it was really awesome. And you know, I got to talk to Ben before before going in and doing it, and he mentioned all of that. Additionally, Thomas is a kind of character that I've never really gotten to play before. Um, I'm really grateful for all the characters that I've gotten to play, but, um, and I love each and every one of them. Um, but for the most part, they all are pretty clean dudes. Um, and they, they tend to be the people that fix the problems and not necessarily create them. Um, and I, I like that Thomas in the best of intentions messes up and really creates issues for a lot of people. Um, for, for what he doesn't view as selfish intentions, they're just natural growing pains. But um, in the end, all that matters is, is he really does mess up, and I, I like that. Um, I really was looking forward to to getting this and working with that emotion. And Thomas is kind of like the, he's the more athletic of the of the brothers. And I know that you have a, a background in in acrobatics. <laughs> does that come into play here? Yeah, I mean, I, I think my my background in, in the circus really comes in a lot when I'm when I'm working on camera. Um, definitely in terms of how physical I am when I when I do want when when I do work um, because you know physicality has always been my way in to a character to start with that and then history. Um, so uh, of course, for a character like Thomas, who is physical. Um, kind of almost first and foremost uh I, 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 that was definitely intriguing to me um but also the circus comes in with everything that I do because it gave me my work ethic um uh for every job that I've done I've been full-time enrolled in school at the same time um I went to public school back home in Chicago while I was filming this now I'm a student at UCLA um and I'm working down in Atlanta so um the circus, there's nothing harder than the circus, is what I always say, because you have to work 10,000 hours for four minutes of an act. Mm -hmm. um, and in order to master something, you've got to do it 10,000 times. Mm -hmm. So um, it teaches you a kind of discipline, and it 
it taught me that even on the coldest days in Ireland, rainiest mountains, whatever, earliest mornings, latest nights, nothing's harder than the circus. So it really made me grateful to be there every, every step of the way. And Jaden, something that I admire about your career is, you know, you do these big productions like, you know, Knives Out and It, but then a lot of your, you know, a lot of your films are also these more like independent projects. What is it about these films that, that speaks to you and makes you want to sort of continue playing in this playground? I mean, it's really always about, it's always about um, the character, like selfishly, it's about the character. Who am I going to play? Are they interesting? Am I going to be challenged here? And then... The other priority is the people I'm going to be working with. Um, so like I said before, Ben, you know, us hitting it off and obviously knowing I'm going to be working. Nicholas Cage, who's, you know, one of the all time legends and, um, and, and, and knowing all this. And then it's also a privilege to work with Max on top of it. You know, that you, you have like a, you, you have this solid structure with people that have good intentions and want to make art to make art. That's all I can ask for being an actor. Um, I, you know, it, it's never really about, um, it's never about those things necessarily. Those usually come with it. And I mean, I mean like budget or money and all that stuff. That's kind of uh, just a background. And you know, very quickly, the Arcadian is coming out into cinemas on the uh, 12th of April. Why should audiences go and see this on the big screen? Because I think it's very important that you see it, you know, in, in that sort of environment. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, people should. I think you can watch, watch it anywhere. Um, but but the big, I see everything on the big screen. Everything's back on the big screen. But also sound is really important in this thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think sound is a really big, big yeah. deal for ours. I mean, part of what makes our creatures so unique and so scary is the sounds that they make. Yes, of course, like the chatterbox thing when they flip their heads everywhere, but but additionally, the sounds of their bodies that maybe wouldn't come through exactly on your TV at home or on, especially on your iPhone. Don't watch it on your iPhone. Yeah. Um, but uh, I probably wouldn't recommend watching it on a plane with those plane headphones. But um, but uh, yeah, I think what really creeped me out when I watched it is the clicking of their bones that humanized them almost. Like it's like they're popping their knuckles, and mm -hmm. um, it it reminded you that these creatures have an anatomy. They yeah, have a yeah. structure. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're they're not just like these otherworldly beings. They evolved. They have they have you know a body that's kind of similar to ours. It, aches and it cracks and that's super creepy would recommend and I don't I, I I don't think that would come through as clearly on on um on a small screen. Yeah. Yeah. Well I think the film's fantastic. Everyone should go to see it, you know, sit in the dark, lose yourself in this world. I wish you guys the the best of luck with the release. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you.